Welcome to class number eight where we're going to study Jupiter and Saturn. We're going to combine those together in one class, uh, mostly because they're so similar. Uh, so starting out with Jupiter, uh, both Jupiter and Saturn, but we'll start with Jupiter, is a gas giant. So remember up until we got to the asteroid belt, they were all terrestrial planets, rocky, earthy, solid planets. Now we're at what's called the gas giants that have a small rocky core, similar to you know, like an Earth or a Mars or a Venus, uh, but with gases swirling all around it, and those gases being lighter and just expand out and make this huge ball of atmospheric gases swirling around this small little core. So they would call them a gas giant because they're so much bigger than the terrestrial planets. Um, Jupiter was named after the Roman god Jove, who's the Roman god of rain and thunder. You know, you've, you've heard the expression by Jove, I think he's got it. So that's uh, Jupiter comes from the word Jove. Uh, and it's interesting because the, this planet serves as a protector planet in our solar system. These are just a couple interesting facts. Um, the gravity, because it's such a huge planet, that it protects from meteors and comets. So like if a meteor or a comet entered into our solar system, the gravity of Jupiter would pull it away and help protect it from uh, getting further into the solar system to, uh, to maybe hit planet Earth or something like that. So just a couple of little interesting facts, but just the big fact to remember, Jupiter is the first of the big, huge gas giant planets. So just a few more interesting facts uh, about Jupiter is that it's actually a little bit like the Sun in that the core of the planet produces heat that uh, lets out heat and gases into the uh, atmosphere. Uh, and so, not really a sun, but just interesting, like the sun, it lets off heat. And then also, it's mostly made of helium and hydrogen. And if you think back to the sun, hey, the sun is made up of helium and hydrogen. So, a couple similarities between the sun and Jupiter that are worth noting. Um, <clears throat> so. When you look at Jupiter, there's a couple features that I want to call out. Uh, here's a little picture of Jupiter now. And if you look and you see that red spot, that red spot on the surface of Jupiter is a super hurricane. It's about three, it's over 300 years old. That they've been able to observe the storm continuing to rage. Uh, and it's many times stronger than a hurricane on planet Earth. The other thing is, is that red spot is actually bigger than the Earth itself. So the, the skies of Jupiter and the, all this atmosphere is, is raging in a huge storm. And when you look at the stripes, the stripes are, are actually just uh, threads and bands of a very violent storm that is just continuing to, to rage and to, to spin all over Jupiter. Um, within that storm is just powerful lightning, many times stronger than the lightning that you would find on Earth. So it's a very stormy uh, planet that's whipped around. One other piece, too, is that you usually, when you think of rings around a planet, think of which one? Saturn. Yes, you guessed it. Uh, but they did discover that Jupiter has a ring as well. Um, it's very thin. It's very hard to see. And they actually didn't, uh, weren't able to find it without a spacecraft being able to go out there and uh, discover it for them. So a quick discussion of the rotation and revolution of Jupiter. So, rotation, how long it takes to turn on its axis, or a day. The rotation is a 10-hour rotation, so it's less than half the rotation of Earth, and that fast spinning or, revol or rotation on its axis is what causes uh, some of the violent weather and the storms on the planet. So that fast spinning core leads to this churning, wild spinning storm up above it. So, 10 hour rotation, and then the revolution, or the time it takes for it to go around the sun. Remember, as we get further and further out from the sun, it takes longer and longer to go all the way around one orbit. Uh, it takes 12 years for Jupiter to make one orbit around the sun. Let's talk for a minute about the moons of Jupiter. Uh, there are over 60 satellites, or uh, big objects, revolving around Jupiter. Uh, it has a huge gravity. It's a very, very strong gravity. Remember at the beginning we were talking about the, um, how it's a protector planet for our solar system. Let many objects that get near Jupiter get pulled right into it and crash into the planet. However, many of them get stuck in its orbit and just begin to revolve around the planet. Uh, there's four main moons that I want to talk about. 
Uh, they were named in honor of Galileo, and they're called the Galilean moons. Uh, so we'll start from smallest to largest, and I'll just give a quick description of each one. So the first is Europa. Uh, it's the smallest of them, and it's basically like a smooth, frozen ocean. It's one of the smoothest objects in outer space or in our solar system period. It's like a, just picture if everything went still and flat and then froze on our oceans. That would be Europa. The next biggest is Io, uh, I-O, spelled I-O, kind of like the biblical city of Ai, really easy to spell. Uh, so Io uh, has, hot, has hot, active volcanoes that belch sulfur. So instead of magma and stuff like that coming up, gas, sulfur gas comes up that stinks like rotten eggs. Um, so it's actually one of the most colorful of the moons because it actually has um, that sulfur in its atmosphere. But you can imagine... Io might be one of the stinkiest places to go in our solar system. The third biggest is Callisto. Callisto is almost the size of the planet Mercury. It has no core, but it's like a, it's almost like a, a big huge ball of ice with rocks all scattered in it. So similar to Europa, it's a big ball of ice, rocks all chunked around in it. Um, it has the largest impact crater in our solar system that we found, so something crashed into Callisto and made a 373 mile wide crater. Uh, they named that crater Valhalla, so Valhalla the crater is on Callisto. And then the biggest of the moons is called Ganymede. Ganymede is the biggest moon in the whole solar system. It's bigger than the planet Mercury. Um, and it would actually, Ganymede would be considered to be a planet if it revolved around the sun, went all the way around the sun, instead of just going around Jupiter. Um, this planet is kind of like an everlasting gobstopper with layers and layers. Uh, it has a hot iron core, uh, or a hot core of iron and sulfur, with a rocky layer on top of that, and then an ice layer on top of that. So it's like it just gets hotter as you go from the ice to the rock to the, the hot core. So there's just a little bit about the four Galilean moons of Jupiter. Um, two other, or one other thing is almost all the rest of the objects going around, uh, which could be called moons, I guess, even though they're not the big four, are really just big balls of ice that got pulled into the orbit or the gravitational pull of Jupiter. And there's one other thing that's worth mentioning. They discovered a moon called Amalthea which is basically just, it's, it's a very strange phenomenon where all these rocks got compressed together and made this big moon, but it's really just filled with like gaps and holes and pockets. So it's just one of the, the many strange uh, objects and big moons that are going around the planet Jupiter. So we've got Europa, Io, Callisto, Ganymede, and then that funky one called Amalthea. Okay, so you'll notice that we don't have quite as much information on some of these distant planets, some of these ones that are farther out in our solar system. Um, Venus and Mars are easier to explore because they're so much closer to Earth. But when we start getting out to Jupiter, Saturn, Neptune, Uranus, we get farther and farther out there. It's hard to get information on these planets. So in 1989, we sent out a spacecraft called the Galileo spacecraft, uh, named after Galileo, just like the Galilean moons of Jupiter. Uh, it took six years for that spacecraft to get from Earth to Jupiter. Uh, so here's just a couple quick facts about that spacecraft that went out there. One, it had to navigate that asteroid belt. And it made it through safely. It didn't get smashed up by any asteroids on its way out uh, to, to reach the planet. Um, two, it didn't have enough fuel to just launch straight at Jupiter. It had to do something called a gravity assist, which I'll include a, a supplemental video if you want to see more about that, which involved it having to go out and then come back and then whip around the gravity of a planet. So a planet kind of uses the gravitational field of a planet to whip it back out there and give it more momentum to, to launch back out. So um, you'll find that, I think, interesting on the supplemental video. Uh, when it got there, it did send a probe down into the core of the planet, so you had the big ball of gas with the violent storms, and then the Galileo spacecraft sent a probe into the middle to gather data, which is how we know that it has a heat-emitting rocky core. Uh, one of the problems, though, was that they, they had a big antenna meant to send 
data back to Earth, but they had a problem. They couldn't open the antenna. They tried all things like rebooting it and things that the, to try to figure out how to get that antenna to open, but they never could get it back, so they were somewhat limited in the amount of data that the satellite was able to send back. Uh, and then when it was done, it obviously wasn't going to make a return trip, so they just programmed it to crash right into the surface of the planet and be gone forever after it had finished its job of sending the data back. If you did want to find Jupiter in the night sky, it is the second brightest planet in our solar system, uh, and you can see it with binoculars or with a telescope. So uh, if we catch it at the right time of year, maybe that's one of our projects, we can get out there with Sam's telescope and see if we can't locate Jupiter in the night sky. Next, let's take a look at the planet Saturn. Um, Saturn was named after the Roman god Saturn, uh, who was the god of agriculture. Uh, it's also where we get the name of the day of the week, Saturday. Uh, so Saturn got his own day in our, in our week. Uh, I sometimes I imagine what would happen if we had renamed them all after uh, Christian names, uh, what they would have called all the planets in the days of the week and things like that. And I think someone actually did try to do that, but it didn't catch on. So we're stuck with all the Roman names. So Saturn is the second biggest planet in the solar system. I think I forgot to mention that Jupiter is the first biggest. So the last planet we just did, uh, Jupiter is the largest planet, Saturn is the second largest. Just like Jupiter, it's also a gas giant, small rocky trigger core, big gaseous atmosphere surrounding that, that little core. Um, Saturn's famous for its rings. Whenever we think of Saturn, we think about the rings that go all the way around into the rings of Saturn. They were discovered in 1610 by Galileo. Um, however, the planet has a tilt to its axis, which means depending on where it is in its orbit, uh, the the image, and the, or the, the part of the rings that you get to see is different. So when Galileo looked at it, he didn't notice them as rings. He actually thought they looked like handles on the side of the planet, which he, of course, perplexed him. He thought was very strange indeed. Um, but it wasn't until 45 years later, a man named Christian Huygens, he discovered that there were actually rings. So he probably caught it in a little bit different part of the orbit and was able to determine that they were indeed rings that went all the way around the planet. Uh, keep track of some of those names like Galileo and Huygens and Haley and some of those other names that you've heard so far because pretty soon we're going to have a library research project coming up. It's going to be a lot of fun. We're going to have a librarian teach us how to, to research a little bit about famous astronomers. So you know a whole lot of that, Christian Huygens. Okay, these planets that are gas giants, uh, they're all very, very similar. So I'm going to call them the twins between Jupiter and Saturn, and we'll just talk about how, uh, how similar they are. So they're both gas giants, big balls of gas. They're both very, very cold because they're so far away from the sun. Uh, Saturn's about negative 300 degrees. Uh, but they also both have a core that puts out heat. Remember how we were talking about Jupiter's kind of like the sun and then it puts out heat. Uh, so the core of Saturn is probably somewhere around 20,000 degrees. So from negative 300 freezing to 20,000 degrees uh, putting, out, putting out heat. Uh, also, uh, in the atmosphere, it's just a very stormy, chaotic, gaseous atmosphere. Um, so, if you look at this picture here of Saturn, you can see the beautiful stripes. All those stripes, just like on Jupiter, are storms as well. Uh, little like hurricanes that can reach over a thousand plus miles an hour, anywhere from five to ten times worse than the worst hurricane on planet Earth. So a lot of similarities between Jupiter and Saturn. So what's with the rings around Saturn? So there's actually thousands of rings that they make up little layers, thicker ones and thinner ones of rings around Saturn. And you'll see some more about that in the supplementary videos. Um, but these rings are made up of dust, ice, and rocks. Similar, just all the stuff that seems to be floating out in space is dust, ice, and rocks. Very sterile, cold, hard place. And so these, this dust, ice, and rocks is collected into a band of debris that just circles and rotates, like many, many tiny moons even, uh, around the planet Saturn. Um, the, pla the, the, the ring itself is about 50 miles thick. We could actually call it 50 miles thin in, the, in that 50 miles is not very thick at all, uh, and they all orbit within that 50 mile band around the planet. Uh, it makes it, if you look at it from the side, especially from so far away as Earth, not very thick at all. Um, although I guess if you were standing there next to it, 50 miles would be pretty thick. 
Uh, in the middle of this ring, or going around in this ring, there's what are called the shepherd moons, uh, named Pandora and Prometheus. And these two moons are called shepherd moons because think of it like a shepherd with his little uh, flock trying to keep all the sheep together. These little moons have their own gravity, and as they float around in the rings, they help keep the, the rings themselves uh, from dispersing and from maybe crashing into the planet, things like that. So the shepherd moons are part of the rings that help keep the rest of the uh, dust and ice and rocks in order and in, in orbit uh, around the planet Saturn. So what does the revolution and the rotation look like for the planet Saturn? Well, again, as we get further and further out in the solar system, it takes longer and longer for a planet to revolve around the sun. I hope you're getting these now because I keep trying to illustrate and talk about revolve and rotate so that you'll have those two motions down by the time we get to the final exam. So revolving around the sun takes 30 years for Saturn to get all the way around its orbit in the solar system. Um, as far as rotation, very similar to Jupiter, it's a 10 hour rotation. It's spinning around and whipping around quick, which helps cause all those storms and all the winds on the surface of the planet. Um, it moves very fast, super fast on its axis, rotating. And it actually even makes the planet start to look kind of squashed because it rotates so quick that the centrifugal force tends to pull out in the middle so the planet kind of goes and then out like that. So Saturn looks a little bit squashed because it rotates so fast that it makes, uh, makes the atmosphere kind of squish down and pull out in the middles. Let's talk about the moons of Saturn. Uh, so just like Jupiter, there's a lot of satellites orbiting around the planet. 30, more than 30 plus uh, satellites or moons moving around Saturn. Um, the biggest, uh, most of those two are space rocks, just like Jupiter, that got pulled into the orbit and continue to, to orbit around. While other ones may have been pulled in and crashed into the planet, some of them just stick around and continue to act as uh, moons or satellites. The biggest of them is a moon called Titan. Uh, the thing that's most interesting about Titan is that it actually appears orange because it has an atmosphere. It's pretty rare for a moon to have its own atmosphere, but Titan does and uh, it gives it kind of that orange glow just like a, a planet would have a, uh, a, a glow or a color due to the light reflecting off of the, the atmospheric gases. So lastly, how do we know anything about Saturn so far out there, even past Jupiter? Well, we sent a spacecraft out there to explore it. It was called the Cassini mission, uh, a huge satellite by satellite standards. It was a six-ton satellite, two stories tall. So it took tons of thrust and energy to get it out of our atmosphere and up into outer space. Uh, but it finally did get out to explore Saturn. Um, it had a little probe, just like we saw in Jupiter, that was sent out to explore past the atmosphere into the core. And the probe was called the Huygens. Ah, do you know where that name came from? Yes, he had confirmed Galileo's rings around the planet. So almost all the information that we do have about Saturn comes from the Cassini mission. See you guys in class.